ನಮೋ ತಸ್ಸ ಭಗವತ ಅರ್ಹತ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧ ಸ ನಮೋ ತಸ್ ಭಗವತ ಅರ್ಹತ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧ ಸ ನಮೋ ತಸ್ ಭಗವತ ಅರ್ಹತ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧ ಸ ಬುದ್ಧಂಗ ಧಮ್ಮಂಗ ಸಂಘಂ ನಮಸ್ಸಿ So good afternoon to you all and welcome to Amravati today Sunday afternoon. So uh, the topic for today is you probably already uh, read uh, outside on the door uh, how can i be at peace while the world is at war. So that's the topic for today so i'll try to uh, keep to my topic so uh talking about peace and uh, war so that's a very uh uh kind of relative term uh sometimes peace can be uh that's what we are after sometimes the war that we are after so humans have a uh, Uh, capability the humans are uh, sometimes we are after the war and for example uh, uh, lots of war films you know war movies about uh, fights and fear and uh, horror this kind of uh, the things that create fear and uh, uh, horror terror in mind some that they are very exciting sometimes sometimes human nature sometimes we like that we we seek that sometimes we seek peace so uh human nature is uh, so much uh 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 a relative to the uh, to the need so what we uh, really uh, need to look at the peace can be uh, um, divided uh, as an internal peace and external peace uh the war also the external uh external war and internal war so uh, in buddhist terms uh sometimes we we consider the world the, the universe is within yourself you know you we ourselves is the the universe you know without i ear nose tongue body we do not experience anything external so um, the eyes ears nose tongue body uh, that is the world in in uh, in some ways and uh, so <clears throat> we have to find uh, like i said at the beginning uh something related something to 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 create terror can be exciting so like i said how many uh war movies and horror movies and uh, the the movies and films that create uh fear so sometimes we we pay lots of money uh in search of that so sometimes when we are fed up with that we feel enough of that then we need peace so uh so war and peace the war has always been in the world if you take the world the universe as an ex- external thing it has always been uh happening in the world and there has always been war and there has always been peace it all depends on uh 
uh, fear and fearlessness. The, the, the peace related with no fear and the war related, <clears throat> related with fear. So sometimes, you know, we are uh, afraid of peace. You know, sometimes when we start looking for peace, we are afraid of peace. We try to avoid peace because peace is boring, you know, it's asso associated with, bo it's, it's boring, it's not exciting, it's not entertaining. So peace is sometimes that uh, very thing that we, we, the very thing that we are looking for, which is peace, sometimes that's the very thing that we try to avoid, try to escape from. So sometimes war, you know, for, for young people, you know, when I kind of uh, grew up in a, in a country where when I was young, there was some war going on, and I could see young people are so excited about war. They always wanted to join the war. They always wanted to go to war because it's exciting. You know, it's something's happening. They want to give their life. They want to be heroes, and they want to feel important. So it's all in the end connected with ego, connected with uh, uh, self-view, sakaiditi. So the origin of the thought, origin of the war is a thought that arises in, in, in man's mind, human mind. So that's the origin of the war is in one human mind that arises in human mind and that's related connected to ego uh, to self-view or sakaiditi me it could be pride you know me my country my nation my religion my uh, territory uh, my clan uh, anything that related associated with me and my uh, something that I need to protect from. I need to protect, I need to give protection. So then that, that thought of possessiveness, this, this belongs to me. I have to protect this. And that sense of having to protect something. And then when you see you, the thing that you are trying to protect is being threatened, you know, uh, uh, try, going to be taken away from you, then you start to feel uh, threatened. Once you are threatened, once we feel threatened, the reaction is uh, try to defend that. So that defensive uh, attitude uh, creates uh, unpeaceful feeling, which we call maybe war, maybe a fight, uh, something in that, that path. So, in kind of original terms, the, the war is always, uh, it creates fear in human mind. So the fear that creates, that uh, involves in war, uh, sometimes I have seen in some people, they have fear, they feel fear when they are looking for peace too. So anything that's associated with uh, fear and fearlessness, that's where we have to draw the line. So uh, the Buddha's teaching is about uh, if you give no fear, you will receive no fear. If you give fear, what you receive is fear. So we have to find a place where we feel no fear, even, even amongst people who are fighting, or even uh, during the wartime, you still can feel no fear within yourself. The fear is associated with self-view, sakkaiditi, we call it self-view, me, and uh, ahankara, mamankara is me, my life is me. Uh, I'm going to lose everything. Um, I'm going to get attacked by something. So that kind of I, me, fear, always, uh, even without a war, 
you don't let's for example you know in in this country there's no war but how many people live in fear fear can be uh, a factor even without having a war you know we don't have to have a war to to feel fear you can just uh, feel so much scared and so much fear just out of living inside your house you know you have all the protection you you know you are well protected you are well looked after you have everything with you but we still feel fear so it is not necessary to experience to see the woe to feel fear so and uh, so the topic is today how can i be at peace when there's war in the world so so we can we can connect war and fear together but if you take the fear factor out the fear itself can manifest can arise in any situation even without being in the war even without the even if you live in a very peaceful country you still can feel experience loss of fear even if you have all the security all so social security you have enough money you have enough safety we still feel fear so fear is not always associated or always felt when you have when we are only in a war so fear can be felt in any situation uh even without feeling threatened we can feel fear and the peace uh that's where we uh have to look for the answer how to find what is peace we if you ask that question yourself what is peace how does it look like how does it feel like to to be peaceful so when there's no when the the place where there's no fear buddha buddha call it uh, abaya the place place of abaya no fear when you experience the place of no fear within yourself in your own heart in your own system and then that's where uh you can really feel relaxed and peaceful when there's no fear so no fear can be experienced can be developed uh even in any situation even in very restless uh, fearful uh, dreadful uh, undesirable situation even even in that 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 kind of situation we still can uh develop we still can experience uh no fear or the peace of no no fear so that's why i say this um uh the peace and war are very very relative terms they they come and go because war is associated with fighting you know war is associated with fighting you know two two fractions two parties fighting or two countries fighting or two religions religions fighting uh that uh, uh but that fight the fighting can be even internal it could be external sometimes it could be internal so uh external fight is uh something that you do physically Uh, with loss of pride and loss of ego but internal fry, uh, fight also uh, that we fight every day you know we all fight our own battles let's go to to our internal battles that's the most imminent closest battle that we fight every day so rather than uh, war external that's that's not imminent that's not very close to us but let's go let's go to our own self that how much a big battle that we fight every day within ourselves even 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 the simplest thing you know even 
with the simplest uh, emotion that how much how much battle that we uh, go through you know we all fight our own battle that's that's where the uh, loving kindness compassion love comes from so when you realize we can apply that to the first noble truth which is the noble truth of suffering so um, when you realize when we see our own battle i'm fighting my own battle you know of it could be, could be anything you know fear of losing something or fear of not getting something and if you're a meditator for example maybe i've been practicing for 10 years i'm not getting anything i'm i'm not getting anything so that creates fear or you try to be a good person you try to be a nice you try to be a kind person you try to develop good qualities but you always fail and then it that creates a frustration the frustration could uh, give you that feeling of uh, uh, fear and that then that internal battle so what we can do we can understand that and accept that's the nature of first noble truth you know the noble truth of suffering this is we all are fighting our own battle and be kind to that battle because we all every single human being we are battling our own we are fighting our own battle but how much kindness how much loving kindness compassion that we apply to to ourselves to to be able to see that so when you start to when you begin to see your own battle your own war and then you you begin to to be uh, uh, more 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 compassionate more mindful more kind to yourself and that's where the 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 loving kindness and uh, compassion start to arise from you know you we have to see our own battle yes of course i am struggling i am battling i'm having a war with my fears or my feelings whatever it is and then you can see every single individual is having the same problem same battle every day how can i judge anybody how can i be unkind to someone how, how can i be uh, 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 unkind to another human being while i am fighting my own battles every day so how can i judge someone else who is having their own battle every day so you know you can we can start feeling that uh, by understanding first noble truth by understanding uh, the nature of this um, uh, uh, the war going on within oneself by being mindful by being aware uh, kind to oneself and we can start develop uh, loving kindness uh, to oneself to yourself and as well as to the others so there are many many ways you can think you know you can contemplate about war and peace so in worldly terms war and peace is very black and white okay war you know we fight we shoot at each other and that's the war and that, that when there's peace there's no shooting and um, and there's peace so that kind of worldly uh, uh, peace and war has always been uh, going on for many many thousands maybe since the war, since the world began you know that war and peace still going on but uh, as buddhist practitioners you know we practice the war war begins in human mind the first thought of war starts in human mind and the first thought of peace starts in human mind so as individuals who practice meditation and contemplate about life we can internalize and take uh this as our own practice 
so how can i how can i be peaceful while the world is at war so uh, what is the most important thing in your life in our life is uh, finding the peace within ourselves by understanding the wars the battles that we are fighting in our own self so no war in the world if we, if we are going back to the world no war in the world has ever started without just one human being or group of human beings thinking about it so the peace is the same sometimes you know peace can also be very uh, very war like you know to create peace sometimes you know you you launch a war to create peace so that's why this worldly war and peace probably uh, does not apply when you uh, as a practitioner as a buddhist practitioner meditation practitioner practitioner into your in, into our life so we we can put that worldly sense of war and peace aside then come back to ourselves so it's very important to find my own battle my own war and my own peace it may sound like selfish but it is not because uh the world worldly war and peace is very uh, uh is very political uh very much associated with ego uh strong self view uh, righteousness lots of righteousness you know the uh, the worldly wars or peace both are very closely linked to righteousness so uh um, when you feel right righteous about something so that could lead you to war or you can be very righteous about peace that also could lead you into war because we want peace to get to to spread peace we have to launch war first and we get rid of all the uh, unpeaceful elements and then we create peace so that's why even the peace could sometimes you know if you if you hold on to the concept of peace very tightly if you become righteous about that that righteousness or uh, clinging to that righteousness could lead you again um, to start another war so that's why this war and peace are very much two sides of one coin the same coin uh that that's why uh as practitioners in the buddha always encouraged us to feel uh to practice this non self understand understand sakkhi ditti understand the noble truth first noble truth the noble truth of uh unsatisfactoriness or dissatisfaction you know some but the most of the time the dissatisfaction unsatisfactoriness create when you, when you are not satisfied with something then you start looking for something to satisfy you to entertain you so that again uh could take you uh on unpeaceful path but by understanding dissatisfaction so understanding that buddha's teaching buddha always encourage he didn't uh, emphasize anything to to do but he encouraged us to understand to to realize to understand to see to witness to see to understand uh, what exists uh, even dissatisfaction unsatisfactoriness or dukkha uh, the the first noble truth of suffering dukkha 
it has to be understood. You know, it has to be understood. This, this, uh, uh, even feeling unpeaceful about yourself. You know, we feel unsettled, unpeaceful, not very peaceful. But he didn't ask us to do anything, but to understand that. Just understand what it is. Without understanding uh, both peace and unpeace, or peace and non-peace, there is no peace. There's no peace can be realized. No, no peace can be realized without realizing, without understanding what creates peace and what creates non-peace. But both, again, uh, something that we have to realize, you know, we, we pay attention to. So, uh, that's why when even world is at war, one can be peaceful if you realize, if you understand, if you are not clinging, or you, if you are not uh, tightly clinging onto our uh, s s the the view or the the view of self or sakkaditi. So these terms you may not be very very familiar. Sakkaditi is the uh, uh, English translation is uh, the self view, the view that my and me so we we always want to to protect defend me and my uh, this sense of me and my so because even during the buddha's time once there's a story uh, uh, there was war you know two two fractions were fighting and actually one, one fraction was Buddha's own clan. Buddha's clan and another clan uh, started to fight for water. There was a river and they wanted part of river uh, on people on this side or the other side. And then Buddha saw that and he went and he sat down under a tree uh, under a tree, the, the tree was, I think it was in, in the autumn, there were not leaves in the tree. And, uh, but he, he was sitting under the tree where the, uh, uh, the uh, opponent uh, fraction to, to Buddha's clan. So then the leader came and asked, and he paid respect and asked, why are you sitting under this tree you know, the, without leaves? There's no even shade. Why are you sitting under this tree? Then Buddha says, oh, I'm really enjoying the breeze comes from that part of the river because that's where he understood that's where Buddha's uh, clan used to live, you know, Buddha's, uh, Buddha's Buddha's clan used to live. So I'm, I'm enjoying the breeze from that, that side. So he thought maybe that hint that the, the leader of the other clan, the warring party, would understand his hint. But he didn't heed the hint. And then he went on and had the war with uh, the Buddha's clan. But did it, it didn't make him unpeaceful because peace is again very non-political, is very personal, it's a personal experience and no external war or uh, agitation could make uh, that peace go away from one's mind. And you can, we can, we can uh, feel agitated, you know, last uh, couple of days, you know, we had something happen in the monastery, you probably some people may have heard and some may have uh, seen. So we think monastery is a peaceful place. You know, we come here for peace. But um, I could, I could see. You know, um, that was kind of entertaining. You know, some people were really enjoying it. It was entertaining, but at the same time, it created some uh, anxiety. And it creates because sometimes we like anxiety because 
you know, we monks, we live in this peace every day and nothing happens. And suddenly when something happens and suddenly, oh, okay, so uh, you experience some kind of agitation. Sometimes agitation, ag agitation is uh, very entertaining. Um, that's why the, 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 the war, you know, something like, oh, the, when you see two people, you know, let's say your two neighbors start fighting, you know, say bad words and, you know, it's just natural to go, you know, to pick your head out and listen, you know, to see what's going on, you know, because it's entertaining. You don't want anybody to kill each other or harm each other, but still it's entertaining. So that's why, you know, it, it all, um, that, but peace, you know, let's say when someone, have you, have you seen, or maybe you have seen one or two, not many, how many movies, how many, how many films about a saint practicing meditation under a tree? Maybe one or two, probably not at all. So, you know, we don't want to see films with saints peacefully walk, peacefully talk, uh, peacefully live their life, and it doesn't come in a film because it's not entertaining. That's why. Peace is not very entertaining. Peace is not very, uh, uh, you know, nothing's happening. But it takes a long, it's a long journey. It's the, it's the end of a long journey. Uh, it's an, I wouldn't like to use the word achievement, but it's, it, it's, uh, it's a reach of a long journey, the peace. So peace doesn't mean that it involves only no unshakable, uh, quiet things. Even the war is, in fact, can be part of peace. So not just an unshakability, unshakability is not just the peace, or peace is not just unshakability. You know, even shakeability, you know, you know, even fear, let's say, you know, we experience, sometimes, sometimes we experience fear. Fear itself can be, uh, because it depends on how it affects you. If the fear doesn't affect you, because once you experience the freedom, it all again goes down to the freedom. You know, if you experience your own freedom, the fear, doesn't have any impact on you. There's no power, fear has no power to shake you up because you are beyond that, you know, you feel uh, freedom or peace. So um, that's why some, you know, even, even uh, uh, very, very, very interesting. This is a story from the, from the scriptures. Um, there was this um, Arahant. Arahant is a fully enlightened person. Uh, he was 19 years old. He was walking to his parents. You know, he was a, he was a monk, and um, he he wanted to get his uh, ordination done. And he was walking through this forest, and he was caught by a group of uh, bandits. And they threatened to kill him, you know, get, take everything you have, we're going to kill you. He said, well, I've got nothing, I have my robe and nothing else. Then he, he then, uh, then this Samanera, he was a Samanera, which is a novice monk, but he was traveling to his family uh, to get ordination, the uh, monk's ordination, big coordination. So then he said, yeah, do whatever you want, you know. Um, this is, life is for me, it's like uh, death. He says, death is for me like jumping into a cool, peaceful place from a fire. And that really shook, you know, the bandits, what? Death is like uh, entering coolness, what, is, what do you mean? And then. The, the bandits say, you know, we've never seen someone like you. You know, we, people always, they, you know, they beg for their lives and they cry and beg for their lives. But you, you are the youngest and you are strange. What, what do you mean? Then tell us more about your philosophy. And then he, he says once, Sakaiditi, uh, you know, the self-view, me and my 
me and me, me, my, my, my. That tightness in the heart is relaxed because this tightness in the heart, because we uh, cling on to things, cling on to righteousness, cling on to uh, anything. It could be anything, you know, even, even, uh, even anything good, you know, even anything good. Even if you make a sword out of pure gold, but the sword still going to, can kill you. No matter it's gold or not gold. So um, even something very good, if you really tightly holding to, and that's going to create this uh, tension, tightness in the heart, that, that's called sakaditi, the, the self-view, uh, the attachment to the self-view. So he says when the attachment to self-view is dropped and you, you see only peace, you see only clarity, you see only uh, no fear, I have no fear. The fear arises only when there is sakaditi, when there is the sense of me, my, my life, my, 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 the attachment to me and my view, that's where the, that's the origin of fear. Now he says, I have no that kind of fear because I have completely let go, relinquished, letting go of that uh, sense of me, the, I, the ident identification of me and mine. So, why do I fear anything? Why do I fear death? Why do I fear life even? You know, both. Life is not fearful, death is not fearful. So then these bandits were really impressed by um, this, this uh, young uh, novice. And then uh, they all followed him and they all ordained and became his disciples. So that's the story goes. So just like that, you know, peace and war again. Uh, like, like, like I said, it's all that what we experience right now, here now. Uh, so we, uh, uh, some people can experience fear without even anything to be afraid of. Sometimes we don't experience fear, we still can experience peace even uh, in a situation that's very pe fearful. It depends on how much you understand about yourself, you understand about nature, sakaya ditti, or uh, self-view, or uh, uh, dukkha satya, or uh, dissatisfaction, the suffering. By understanding that, we can, uh, we can evolve to be the kindest human being. So when you see yourself that compassion and kindness, loving kindness towards yourself, and you experience that kindness, and that's the, you know, then, then you, you, can feel the freedom of fear, can feel the freedom of fear. The freedom, the, the absence of fear, absence of fear is where the presence of peace. When there's absence of pe fear, that's where the presence of uh, peace. So, so peace and fear. So we have to work with, you know, go kind of together. Um, you know, some we, we can live in the most peaceful place on the earth, you know, in the world. Amaravati is the most peaceful place we can, you can live in England, in this country, in this world, really. It's a very peaceful place, very secure. You know, we uh, keep precepts, you know, we don't cheat each other, we don't tell lies to each other, we protect each other, uh, we try to be kind to each other. So much uh, goodwill, so much good thoughts towards each other. But individually experiencing fear is a huge thing even in a monastery. 
which has a very safe, uh, uh, wonderful environment. Why? That's the that's the question we can ask. Why? You know, we come into sometimes. You know, we monks. I can talk about monks because I'm a monk. Because we have these rules to keep. Sometimes it's it's natural that we we very tightly hold on to rules, and they are all good things. You know, for example, I have very strict. Uh, rules and the first four rules and next 13 quite strict rules I had to keep I cannot break any of those the first four I cannot break if I if I break one of those I won't be a monk anymore and that is serious business and then I can really tightly hold on to those four rules uh, and uh, see every possibility sometimes you know I check, oh, maybe I broke one of those. And then I try to find unpeace situation so I can entertain myself. You know, maybe I, maybe I did that. Maybe, ah, oh, yes, maybe then I go to read books and I start reading books. Oh, maybe, maybe read the commentary and go to the commentary. And then you still can't find anything that's any evidence that I broke the rule, but still, I really entertain myself. Maybe I broke the rule. Maybe I should go. I should disrobe. I should go. Then, you know, I have to listen to that kind of uh, mental proliferation. You know, how much? I'm, I'm so much after peace, but why do I want to make myself so... Why do I want to feel un, non-peace? or uh, that kind of uh, non-unpeaceful feeling. So because we like it, you know, we like to feel alive. You know, we like to feel the burning, you know, it burns, you know, it's burning. It's, uh, it gives you some kind of burning. So we like that burning. And when you're burnt out and, oh, okay, that's enough. Oh, I go and meditate, now I need peace. And then we, you know, go back to peace. So this is like a duality, it's like, a, you know, flipping a coin time to time. So, although we like, although we like the peace so much, and we like to feel unpeaceful so much too, sometimes we like to feel unpeaceful too, you know, that's why we do, you know, uh, we perform adventurous things, you know, very life-threatening things that we do, you know, for example, like, you know, jumping from a cliff, you know, bungee jumping, or uh, do life-threatening, take part in life-threatening activities. Why? We want to feel excited, you know, something going on, a rush in the blood, a rush in the body. And then, then we, we feel, oh, then that will give me freedom, liberation. So, um, yeah, so um, go back to our topic today. So how can I be peaceful while the world is on uh, at war? And if you find what the peace is within yourself, even though even though the world is at at war, your peace won't be uh, uh, affected by that. Your, your peace will still remain as an experience. Sometimes even, even though there's no war in the world, you have the most peaceful place to live, but still you may not feel peaceful. You, feel, you may feel agitated, upset, angry, all these emotions. So what can we do? What can we do? So what can we do? So we can, we can try to understand that. That's where the real peace comes from, trying to, trying to understand. Understanding expands your heart. You know, it gives so much space into your heart by understanding without judging, without judging non-judgmental understanding of things as they are. This is how it is. This is how they are. So unjudgmental understanding gives that expansion to the heart and then that gives uh, uh, 
liber liberation and freedom to your heart that liberation and freedom is uh, once you see that that is the uh, the peace and joy and uh, freedom that one can experience that liberation freedom joy uh, will not be uh, destroyed or affected by the external factors in the world like uh, uh, real uh, fight you know real fighting of a war no you still can feel be at peace of course you know uh, politically politically war is very bad we shouldn't we shouldn't allow of course you know war is bad you know it's always uh, it destroys human life, it, it, it destroys animal life. Uh, we always try to avoid, stop the war. Uh, but uh, again, you know, like I said before, um, if you hold on to that view, there shouldn't be any war. We should only make peace. And, you know, you can see how many, how many strong countries or factors um, take take on weapons to make peace because they want to make peace in the world they they want to have the biggest missile because they want to keep the country in peace you know to have the peace to create world peace we have to have more bigger missiles and and uh, more warheads because we have to keep the world in peace that's why this uh, that, that kind of peace and war is very political and very worldly uh, but uh, again, coming back to our own practice, the peace and war is within ourselves. So if we can find our own peace by understanding our own battles. So what we have, you know, we, we have so much compassion for the people who are uh, in the battles. And I remember I went to... Uh, few months ago I went to, the, you know, to Omaha Beach, uh, the cemetery in Omaha Beach and it's a very moving place. This cemetery, you know, thousands of uh, young people died and, and so uh, it was a very reflective place. You could think how much, you know, human mind, the human, uh, it's all again in you know, a tightness in the heart that Sakai Ditti, I'm right, it's my right to do this, and it's my right to make peace, and then I'm going to go to war to make peace, and then that also destroyed many, many lives. So it's a very complicated uh, thing to understand, you know, in, in worldly sense, because we, even not only humans, and sometimes I see these uh, ants, and I come from a tropical country. Sometimes it's two group groups of ants, black ants and uh, red ants. Then they meet. Oh, again, you know, another way they just bite each other to, to death. You know, they kill each other, you know, black and um, red ants. So uh, it's in the animal body, you know, this ego once the animal body is uh, engulfed by ego uh, taken over by uh, me and my view i have to protect my i have to defend myself i have to defend my uh, clan i have to defend my country that kind of righteousness that human nature that voice fight is inevitable so that's why uh, this worldly uh, war and peace is very relative. They are very uh, fragile, very dependable, uh, uh, because sometimes we forget uh, all the bad things that we experience. You know, humans have human human beings had to go through, and we start again, over again, and it repeats again. So because we, you know, in Europe, we just finished a war and we still remember that, we talk about that, we, we, we are really careful about that. So 
you know, in another thousand years time, people forget that and the tension arises in human mind, animal mind, and we act as animals again. So that's, that's, so that's why I emphasized us to practice peace within oneself, within ourselves. So find, find the place there's no fear. Wherever you go, wherever you live, on a train, on a plane, bus, monastery, town, wherever you go, and try to understand uh, 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 the place where there's no fear. Why fear arises? Why does fear exist in ourselves? Why does it exist? I understand that. Try to try ask that, that, that question. Why does fear exist? Is it useful or not useful? Fear can be very useful because that's how we protect ourselves. If we didn't have fear, we will get run over by a car or train. So fear is useful. But um, when you are attached to your fear so much, you know, we are, when we are attached to our fear so much, and then we cannot let go. Once we cannot let go, heart is tight. When the heart is tight, so we become very fragile. So then we have to, what we have to practice is letting go. So we let go of this uh, strong attachment, strong attachment to this, the, the view of me and my, me and my. So we, we begin to let go. To let go of that, we have to see things as they are. Whatever happens, whatever battle that we are, uh, having in our life, we understand that rather than trying to judge that. You know, we, we are very great in judging ourselves more than others. You know, we are very heavily judged by, I'm heavily judged by my own judgment. So be relaxed with that, you know, be kind with that. I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't have to judge myself. I don't need to make strong judgments about myself. Why? Why do I have to do that? It's not necessary. Can I live without being judged by myself? Can I live without being so uh, feeling bad by my own judgments? And always ask these questions and uh, remain in the question. Don't try to find an answer, but remain in the question. Then you can ask one, one question. What is fear? Or why does it exist? Do I need fear? You know, take one question. Stay a week, but don't try to find an answer. Trying to find an answer, you, we create tension again. We create restlessness again trying to find an answer, but stay, remain in the question. Oh, what is peace? What is peace? Something like that. So, um, and then world will always be the world. It always was what it is, what it was and it is always what it is, and in the future it will be what it will be. But what we can change, rather than the world, we can change ourselves. I can change myself, and then uh, this is a wonderful place to live. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice place to live. Once you find that uh, restful, peaceful place in your own heart by being kind and understanding yourself. And that expands your heart into kind of limitlessness. You don't judge yourself. You are only kind to yourself. You, you, are the, you, you can really laugh about yourself. You, know, you really laugh about yourself every day. You can laugh at yourself every day. 
because you don't judge yourself. You know, you can laugh at your own silliness. You can laugh at your own stupidity. You can laugh at your own uh, silly thoughts rather than judging them. And uh, if you find the place that you can laugh at yourself without judging yourself, that kind of, then it relaxes your heart. And then you can uh, see the light of that uh, understanding and peace. And if you experience that kind of peace, uh, even the whole world is uh, talking nonsense or talking war, or the, all the complaints about uh, uh, the worries about, you know, the, the latest worry, you know, the new, new latest worries about, you know, the global warming, you know, is going to do this, this and that, the humanity is going to finish in 50 years time, 100 years time, you know, it's all those very intimidating, very uh, fearful topics. So, uh, um, so you can live uh, unaffected in this world if you, if we can find that uh, peace within oneself. So, uh, so we can finish for now, and then I only gave you an introduction. The real uh, next part is Q, question and answer. Uh, so if you have any question, I'm very happy to be available to answer your questions. So this is only an introduction, and I gave you something, and you can think and you can ask anything uh, any question that you like to ask and after uh, a few minutes break, I don't know how long, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, kind of tea time, and come back in here and uh, I'll be available to answer your questions. There's a microphone, if you, uh, I don't know how it, how you, do you normally pass it on? Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. And, but this is very good acoustic in this building, so you can ask. Record. Oh, right, okay. Maybe just wait another, just a few seconds. A couple of yeah. people still coming in. Right, so uh, thank you very much for your talk. Um, when I um, encounter conflict of whatever sort in my surroundings, it's kind of my default reaction um, that I want to do something. and. I find it a very useful and interesting and beneficial exercise or discovery trying to be, trying to investigate that sense of I want to do something and maybe calm it down a little bit and trying to be peaceful. Um, but I was wondering whether you have some thoughts on um, when do we have to be active? Like, I think the sense of peace for ourselves is probably a very important basis. But I, I wonder whether excess or too too much passivity, passivity mm. can be an unwelcome byproduct yeah. of yeah. peacefulness. And I was wondering whether you have some thoughts on that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Yeah. I mean, uh, the peace, can you all hear? Peace is not something that's uh, uh, inactive by itself. You know, what, what one, the best, the most uh, uh, 
uh, successful decisions in your life actually comes when you when you feel peaceful when you feel, your mind is 100 percent or at least a lot lot more active when your heart is relaxed your intuition is is full in full action when your heart is clogged with many thoughts fears and uh, restlessness um, uh, the the acti act activity level level of activeness is not very high so we can't think clearly but my personal experience when i you know when you feel peaceful when you feel it's only a feeling it's not something that makes you inactive so when you when you it's actually feeling uh, relax in here is feeling relaxed when your heart is relaxed feeling relaxed then you can make very quick decisions you can take very quick uh, decisions or very quick uh, you don't even need to think you know you know what's go what what i'm what am i going to do you know you know uh, intuition you know your intuition level is very uh, sharp so my experience is when you have that kind of relax um, um, uh, uh, clear state of mind or heart that kind of peace i can name it as peace but relax and clear state of mind uh, i'm more alert and uh, more active and uh, in intuition my intuitions are very very clear and sharp so um uh so the the peace is so much related associated with with the meaning of just peace out you know you don't you don't feel anything you're not interested in anything it's not like that peace is something you do not or the place where you do not uh uh you do you do not have fear you know you are not influ influenced by fear you have relaxed heart and you have no fear of facing yourself you know that the most um, um, fearsome thing or scary thing that we face in daily life is ourselves in you know, our own thoughts you know the day you know what am i going to do today the day is so fearsome but when you have that clarity mind is clear relaxed and uh, fully aware and <clears throat> then intuition is very clear and you can really even and you can make decisions uh, on purpose like intentionally you can oh i am going to have a cup of coffee so you can really enjoy even your own thought you can hear your thoughts when you have that clarity normally we don't hear our thoughts you know just habit you know okay i'm going to have coffee and you just do out of habit but when you have that clarity peace because mind uh, mind has somehow stopped being restless it's a restlessness that makes so much uh, noise so mind is less restless so you you only use very few thoughts we need only very few thoughts during the day active thoughts you know very few thoughts and you know, very practical few thoughts okay i have to get up now i have to do this and that, very few thoughts because so we we can use only very minimum amount of thoughts the whole life we don't need much a rest we can uh, we can actually rest our you can rest your heart in that restful place which is the place where there's no restlessness that's why rest, restlessness is a, is the biggest uh, one of the the biggest uh, impediment or uh, disturb disturbance to to understanding restlessness we cannot just rest you know always wanting to do something wanting to think something wanting to say something always wanting to that's why i said at the beginning the peace is boring that's what we think but if if you really understand what peace is it's actually 
is the most most uh, joyful thing. It's very joyful because you don't judge. You know, even if you're not peaceful, you 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 are peaceful because you don't judge it. You know, you don't judge your unpeacefulness. Even if you feel restless, I don't. You know, restless. I don't. I'm 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 not interested in judging me because I'm restless. Rest, a restlessness is part of it. I'm not judging my restlessness because it's restlessness. You feel joyful uh, even even when you experience restlessness. So, uh, yeah, you can really enjoy thinking, right? It's like when you get addicted to something, for example, you know, I say, I take very simple example, maybe, you know, someone's addicted to, to smoking, you know, for example, you know, when you first start that, maybe first, Cigarette, second, third, and very nice, and new experience, very good. After a short while, and you just do it because you cannot let go. You become a slave of the action. So that's what happens. You know, we become slaves of our thinking. So we stop. We pause that thinking and enjoy the place, the pause of uh, that uh, between lines or between words, you can, oh, I am going to have a cup of coffee. And you can even hear your thought, oh, no, I'm thinking, I can think, I can hear my thinking. Like, you know, we have hands and legs, how many times we just felt, oh, what good hands, you know, have I ever thanked my hands? Have I ever felt I really, how much grateful I am? to my hands, something like that. But we have them, we use them, we never even think. This mind is the same, we use thoughts, we think, we use thoughts, we don't even think we are thinking, we don't even know we are thinking. We just use them, thoughts, just out of habit. So, uh, uh, I mean, the, um, Meditation, we cannot, at the same time, we cannot meditate whole day, you know, we do morning and evening. So if you do good meditation, morning one hour, evening one hour, maybe midday, half an hour, if you go back to your whatever practice you practice, your peace, that's good enough, like at least twice a day. I mean, you ask the, the practical answer is maybe twice a day. And the rest we have to live life, you know, we have to be practical and we have to live, interact with other people. So we have to talk to other people, do things, get tired and uh, so even monastic life is the same, you know, we can't meditate, only this Buddha can meditate 24 hours, 365 and uh, we humans cannot do that, but we can practice twice a day good solid meditation and the rest work mindfully and try to understand uh, your thoughts, what you think. St live in that clarity, stay in that clarity, that clear mind, clear thinking, you know. During the day remain in that clear mind, that clarity, you know, mind is very clear. You know what you're thinking. You know every single thought, even you thought, you know, you were thinking. You remember what you were thinking. You know, if someone says, oh, I don't remember what, no, you remember very well what you, were, what, what you thought. But unless, you know, you're restless and being hurried by something. So, uh, practically, I would say, you know, two times a day, solid practice of meditation, you know, like that. Uh, peace, immobile peace and the rest of the day, live in that clarity. And evening, when you finish the day, day wrap up with again with another uh, uh, experience of that meditation session. So, is that some answer that, uh, are you happy or? Because we cannot feel peace, you know, 24 hours, we, because we are human beings, but we can feel that two, two, three times a day, but clarity is peaceful. 
when you have clear mind, when mind is clear, you know your mind is just like this. You, know, you took something into your hand. You take a crystal, big crystal ball into your hand. You can see it very well. You know, whatever way you turn it, you can see it very well. Just like that, when you practice that meditation and when your heart is somehow uh, like uh, the uh, obstacle for the cl clarity is clinging onto something, attachment. Attachment is the biggest, you know, attachment. When you have some attachment to something, it's not easy to see things clearly because you are biased. You know, we, we, it's natural that we are biased to something when you have an attachment. So when you, you, you we, we try to understand attachment and, and understand it, you know, I, I wouldn't even use the word letting go, but understand. Understand what at attachment brings and it, what it creates. It creates tension, tightness, suffering, whatever. You understand that, but don't judge that. Oh, because, you know, I'm so attached to this, you know, this is creating me so much trouble. Don't judge yourself like that. But that's the real graciousness, you know, that being gracious, okay. I'm suffering, this is suffering. You see, you see it, you can see that clearly. You don't judge it, you, you don't judge your suffering. But you graciously see that, you know, embrace or see that, you know, you can see that this, it doesn't harm, it's like uh, handling poison, let's say. If you have a cut, a wound in your hand, and if you handle some poisonous thing, it could poison your bloodstream, go into your bloodstream. But if you have no cut or wound in your hand, you can handle something, you, you still be safe. Yeah, just just like that. Uh, uh, you know, when when you uh, don't judge your suffering, but uh, you see as it is, uh, then you can. Uh, it doesn't uh, disturb you your peace. Uh, Um, hello. Um, my question, I don't know, maybe it's a simple question, um, but you were speaking about um, understanding your fear um, and, like, I, I don't know, reflecting on it. Um, and then you spoke about letting it go. Um, my question is, what is the act of letting go? What does that really mean? You mean the what's to let go? Yeah, so um, like I said, you know, in, in Pali term, I can use sakaditi. Sakaditi is the, the 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 self view, me and my, me and my. That uh, self view or sakaditi, the attachment to self view. It's not the self view itself, but the attachment to the self view. So we, when we, when you have strong attachment to self view. Uh, that complicates everything. The, the, the attachment to self-view complicates the thinking process. So what you let go is the attachment to self-view. Um, attachment can be... Uh, all the, the way it can be understood by uh, understanding what it creates, what it gives you. We all, none of us like to suffer, like, or fear, for example, fear. So then you can see why does fear arise. You can ask that question, you know, very soundly, ask the, a sound question, why does fear arise? Like I say, don't try to find an answer straight away. Ask, ask the question, remain in the question. Why does fear arise? Why does fear arise? Why does fear arise? You stay in that question, then you'll see, uh, oh, 
then you you know you you you'll see how fear arises because uh, something that I'm attached to uh, going to be harmed or I'm going to lose something I'm going to this is going to happen to me so me and then you find the the answer uh, the answer becomes you that question becomes a meditation object asking that question you know sometimes even don't even try to find an answer and uh, just by understanding the question answer is already there so um, uh, of course you know what we you question sorry um, answer to your question what we have to let go really is the the attachment to that self view you cannot really find what is the self view what is attachment um, letting go happens when you understand the dukkha the suffering you know whatever uh, when you attach when we attach to something what it creates is fear and suffering fear is suffering fear is not not Uh, joyful happy feeling it's it's a, it's a tense excuse me it's tense painful feeling when the painful feeling arises you you look at that and understand this is painful feeling and you don't judge your feelings you don't um, uh, fear them but you investigate or you watch rather than becoming the owner you become the watcher you know you become your own watcher you watch yourself not own yourself you know when we try to own oh my this is my feeling i'm i'm going to do some going to do something you try to own your feeling you know yeah that's how we create attachment but you become the knower not the owner you can change the the letters you know uh, be the knower not the not the owner so when you know something it takes long time it it takes years of practice sometimes you know maybe months and years but in that practice you have to be very strict and uh, uh, after 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 certain time you will start to feel relaxed oh, all good i'm happy now so i don't need to do any more then you know you stumble again you you see you bump into the the same problem again because mindfulness is the main factor you know mindfulness awareness that's why sati sati sampajanya mindfulness and awareness is the main factor so you have to whatever happens we practice mindfulness and awareness and practice mindfulness and awareness two times at least two times a day meditation so we cannot really talk more in depth without even meditation you have we have to do that sitting meditation at least once two times a day really good three times ideal but two times a day some meditation will give you that uh, rest to the heart holiday to the heart that once you feel that you know okay, your heart is at at holiday and you relax and then then you actually you realize there's nothing really to let go it's actually what you have to do is to stop clinging on to it rather than rather than trying to let go you know not clinging on to it not clinging on to something and that itself is when you when you think oh i got to let go of something really when you realize actually there's nothing to let go what you can do is not clinging on to not clinging when things arise i don't get involved you live graciously you don't get involved so that in that way you don't cling on to something so clinging doesn't happen you don't get involved in clinging and because you remain in mindfulness sati sampajanya that's why mindfulness practice in mindfulness on the body is so important 
you know, when you, when you walk, when you sit, when you're lying down, always stay as much as you can with mindfulness on the body. That's very helpful. That uh, keeps your body from being restless. The body is, body is such a restless entity, you know, it's such a restless thing. It always creates less restlessness. When the body is not that restless, I mean, body is, uh, body knows how to rest and uh, mind uh, responds to that accordingly. Um, yeah, so not, let's say, I would retract my word, letting go, maybe, let's say, not clinging. Try, try, not try even. Uh, once you realize, once you know things as they are, then you also see the only problem is because clinging. The nature, the nature of this mind is clinging onto something. When something happens, we cling. We cling. That's how we used to, you know, we, how, how we operate. We cling on to things. Uh, so we don't uh, cling on to things. And that's all we can do, not, not clinging. Stay restful, not clinging. And that's where the clarity is. And the mind is clear, that clarity. Uh, in that clarity, you see, mind is not clinging on to anything. Mind remains clear and non-clinging, because clinging is suffering. Clinging is painful, you know, when you cling on to something, it's like a, like a claw, you know. It's like something close into your heart, you know. Claw, clawing something is, is painful. So you don't claw into anything because that's uh, peaceful and uh, no pain. Uh, and not, not clinging on to something. So then you start to enjoy not clinging because clinging is, it hurts. When you cling to something, it hurts. You, you quickly realize it hurts. And then you, you stay not clinging because it's, that not hurt is the peace. You have no pain in the heart. That's the peace. That's the clarity. You feel no uh, anxiety in the heart. That's the peace. That's the, that's the clarity. You feel no uh, fear in the heart. And that's the clarity and the peace. So no fear, no clinging, that gives you no fear uh, and all the clarity and uh, uh, place that you can be uh, non-suffering. So that in that clarity. So uh, um, that's why it's not, not, not clinging is the is the the practice hello um i have realized that um you know i have also some insights like you you are mentioning where it's i can see how you know my attachment to the self is creating certain suffering but then as soon as i kind of go back you know back into normal life it's, it's hard for me to kind of trust in, in living without all of these judgments. Like it feels so much safer to keep judging, judging myself, making things part of myself and my own, yeah. <laughs> so um, together with, um, I don't know, I try to make it more clear, but basically how we can find trust that we we kind of can function well in this society where everyone is judging, where everything is based on a little self <laughs> with us get, stepping out of that. Mm. Um, because, yeah, I feel safe in this environment here, but that's obviously not as safe uh, in another place to kind of, yeah, walk through the world with this other perception. Um, I even feel like trying to empathize maybe with friends or with family to really um, Yet, I don't know, I, I kind of keep coming back to, to understand kind of their pain. It's easier for me to, to also be in this small little space um, because I'm afraid that, yeah, if I let go, then, you know, <laughs> I might not be able to completely be with them. So, yeah, 
just some thoughts. Maybe you can give some reflection. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, good, good question. Um, yeah, world is a tough place. You know, this is a tough existence. Exist we don't realize how tough it is uh, because we uh, we fight and we try to survive. Um, I take it, I, I personally myself, I take it like this. Uh, it's like uh, uh, a ship captain, you know, I think myself, I'm a ship captain. So if I, uh, you know, I'm a pilot, I, I uh, navigate my ship on a very peaceful, calm sea, I won't be a good captain. But I, I got to have a good storm, you know, if I've been through good storms, couple of really good strong currents and storms. If I came out of good couple of storms, and then I'll be a very respected and experienced uh, captain. Like their life is like a ship, you know, life is like a, sh like a ship that sometimes the water is calm, sometimes we have calm water, we can navigate, it's very calm. Sometimes un unpredictable, rough sea, we have to go through the rough part of the sea. And if you afraid and try to, you know, avoid, you cannot avoid uh, rough sea when you're in, when you're at sea, you cannot avoid because that's, you have to go through that. So, um, my personal take, you know, whatever life gives me, I don't complain. I try not, you know, but try. Uh, I try not to uh, bow down in front of life and make it, you know, beg my life and make it a little bit easier. Because, no, because life, I didn't ask for it and then I don't beg from it. You know, like kind of, uh, I take it gracefully. You know, I didn't ask for this, and I don't beg from it. I don't beg, oh, be a bit more peaceful and a bit more nice and a bit more uh, um, convenient. No, whatever this gives me, whatever the universe gives me, I take it. If it gives me, you know, the, the ultimate last worst thing is death for all of us. If that's what it gives me, no begging. I have no, uh, no complaints. I'm not going to complain because, uh, again, you know, when we go back to the principles of Buddhist teaching, and it's not me, it's not personal. You know, we take this life as so personal, it's my bit of body, my, my life. That's what everybody else thinks, you know, my life. Everybody else, every single body is my life. Seven billion, my life. But if you take it as a phenomena or sankara, the world exists, we, we living beings on it, and we also try to survive and exist. And if you take it so personally, this is my bit of nature, this is my bit of life, I want, I want it to be like this. And we're going to, uh, that tightness is going to make you suffer a lot. So, of course, you know, we, I understand, you know, it's nice to have peaceful, nice, friends around and easy environment to work that's that's natural but whatever um, uh, life offers you if you have no fight with it if you don't fight your life life will treat you nicely because we i cannot fight myself how can i fight me i cannot i won't win i can fight i, I won't have the victory i won't win over my life, because life is going to win anyway. But what I can do, because I already given the victory, you you are the winner. Life, you are the winner. You you already won. What I can do, I can work with it. I can work my way around without being 
battered by, without being beaten by you. Now, the, the thing is not being beaten by life. You take it, or how tough, how hard it, it is, you, you, you have to uh, practice that you won't be beaten by it. I won't be beaten by it, but I won't be, I, I won't be uh, an enemy of my own life. Because when you create that conflict within yourself, it's a conflict and you, we start a war. Oh, why, why is not my life, I can do this, I can do that. You know, you, you, you only drag yourself around, which is some kind of war, you know, some kind of battle. Again, another war, battle, the topic today, you know, it's a battle. So the best battle sometimes is not fight. You know, the, the, the only, the, this is a battle actually, you have to win by not fighting. This internal battle has to be won by not fighting. So the, the more you fight and the more, lo more loss you're going to experience. So, so this battle, it's a battle, life is a battle, but we don't fight it. And if you don't fight this battle, so you can see the victory, you can see the uh, end of it. But if you start you know, battling, fighting, fight the battle, and uh, you know, we will be consumed by the war, by the battle, by the war, you know, the, life, the war of life. We will be consumed by it. So the best way is to not fight but see clearly as they are, as it is, and let heart uh, to rest, and that resting, the clinging drops, the clinging, clinginess, and the clinging drops, and there's no clinging, there's no attachment, and then you feel the relaxed uh, peace within yourself. So that um, experiencing that relaxed peace or um, um, uh, within yourself, that's the uh, then you see. Okay, because I didn't fight the battle, so that yeah. Sometimes no answer is the best answer. Sometimes no fight is the best fight. Uh, that's how. And that's tactfully. That. Skillful means to to have to deal with yourself because mind is very clever. It's much you know. It's clever. We we cannot go near there. So, but we have to be outsmart, more clever than that. Because uh, if I respond to my mind, if I respond to my sankara, so if I respond to my whatever going on, and then uh, I'm not smart. You have no, no responses, no responses. You know, mind tells you, oh, you know, you're being unfairly judged, you know, do something, say something. No, I can hear you. Be a good listener. I can hear you. Yeah, I hear you. Then, you know, your mind will, and do something, do something, say something. Yeah, I can hear you. And you, you know, you, you don't give responses. You don't fight with that. So you, actually that's the way letting go, and that's the way you let it happen, you let it happen. It happens and it will go by itself. They will happen and they will go by themselves. For example, you know, anger arises. And anger, you know, it's a natural thing. We all experience that. It becomes the anger only when you start to respond to anger. You know, you start to respond, you know, you become, yes, I'm going to, then you get involved in anger. Once you are involved, you get consumed. You know, you have no power. But if you do not respond that you have power, then anger doesn't have any power. Because you do not respond, you, don't, you do not get involved with it, in it. So that's the... Ideally, you know, ideologically, ideally, that's the way. But of course, you know, I totally understand, you know, world living in the world. 
um, it's a tough place, but uh, practicing mindfulness, awareness, and not responding to defilements is even more tough than living with tougher people. So because the inner battle is toughest battle. The, all the rest, you know, you can, uh, uh, Buddha said, you can, uh, you can fight thousand battles and win the whole world, but if you, if you, even if you won the world by thousand battles, but yet, if you win your own battle, he says, it's still superior battle, winning your own battle, than winning thousand battles. So, it's the, the victory of, over your own, our own uh, battle, which is, you know, again, like I said, responding, no responses. Of course, you know, you are kind, that's where, that's how you start to feel kindness, loving kindness, you know, you, once you, once you know yourself, you have no other place to live except loving kindness. You have, that's why Buddha is called, his compassion is like ocean, like um, his comp compassion or his loving kindness is like ocean. No, no judging any, anything can drop in that. There. So heart, your heart only lives in compassion and loving kindness. You have no judgment because you have no limitations. Limitations come through judgment. So once you have no limitations, your heart is expansive and unjudgmentally wide, and that's loving kindness and compassion. Once you have that, a little ripple cannot, you know, uh, you, you have huge heart, you have huge amount of compassion and loving kindness. It cannot be um, stirred, it cannot be uh, uh, stirred by anything that easily, and you have clarity. So uh, yeah, that's the that's how I try to see myself. You know, not in 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 some ways practically like that. Um, uh, I have no, I'm not fighting with my life. It happened, and I do the fair. I do it fair. I do it. I treat it very fairly, reasonably. I do my, you know, exercise or yoga. Or I treat it nicely, fairly, I don't abuse it. I treat it nicely. Whatever you give me, I don't expect. I'm not, I don't battle with that. I treat you nicely. You treating me nicely or not, that's none of my business. So, same way, mind, I treat my mind nicely. I treat my heart beautifully. Whatever you give me, I'm not interested. So then you actually have yourself to yourself and you, can uh, really, uh, you know, feel the joy of even being alive. You know, being alive is so joyful. Just when you take hold of that, your mind and body in that way, you know, it, it, in many ways, that's letting go. Uh, you know, you can really enjoy every single day, you know, be to another day, you know, nice, you know, being alive great and being only being you're only grateful being alive for another day if you're not alive for another day that's fine too so but as long as you're being alive you're only grateful so uh, probably makes sense uh, yeah it's tough you know living is tough but um, uh, it's like um, a storm when you're in, when you're at sea, storm. There's no other way you have to go through storm. And one, you will come out of the storm, you know. Storm won't be the forever storm in, you know, at sea. You know, that, that's at some point there's no storm, the sea is going to be calm. And when sea is calm, calm is not going to be forever. And there'll be storm around the corner, so life. Is always like that, but take when the calm calmness comes, take it as it is, and then when rough storm comes, come take storm as it is, without without judging, but being more prepared.
So uh, I think time is up for today. And if you, but you, you know, you're welcome to stay another 10, 15 minutes if you want. Uh, uh, I can do one more question if you have one. Test. Uh, Adzan, thank you. Uh, I sometimes volunteer at a hospice for the insane, and sometimes there are patients who uh, talk a lot and lies, like we will constantly, you will talk to them and they will not seem to be like they talk to you and they do not actually seem to be interested in the conversation. They are only interested in being heard. Uh, in the pleasure of uh, speech, yeah. maybe, and and the thing they create in the head. And I was hoping if you could uh, say, because for me, when I'm in front of them, in one thing I need to interact with them because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm there to talk to them a bit, maybe make their life a bit easier. On the other hand, if I talk to them, I'm feeding their reality fantasy. I, I don't know what to do really when I talk to them. <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, as you know, dealing with humanity, uh, because we have words, we have thoughts, we have language and ability to talk. So that's, uh, that's human nature. So, uh, yeah, we, we, uh, It depends on how much time you have sometimes, you know, so if you're really busy and sometimes you don't want to stop someone from talking, you know, if you don't want to stop or but you don't, you still don't have time and you can't be, you can't say anything, you know, might feel like uh, rude, being rude or interrupting. Uh, Well, if you, you know, if you have practical answer, you know, if you have time to listen, and uh, listening is a great, great, great quality of a human being. That's why we have one mouth, two ears. <laughs> you have listened more and talk little. <laughs> so, uh, actually, you can learn a lot by listening, you know. It, a lot in our lives, you know, we, if, if there's anything, 99.9, .9, we learn in our life not by talking, by listening. So it's a great quality to be able to listen to something. You know, if you have time, of course, you know, you're rushing to something, you can't, you know, listen to someone's talk. You have to apologize. Sorry, I, I'm running to catch a train. You know, I, I have no time to listen to you. But next time, something like that. But I'm not talking about that kind of scenario. If you can listen, you know, it's a great quality, you know, being able to, in, 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 in Dhamma it says giving the year, it's a giving, uh, you give your years, it's a giving, it's a generosity, uh, being able to, to give years and listen to someone is a generosity, it's being generous, so you can practice as a generosity. Okay, so I'm being, you know, I listen to someone, okay. I have one hour, you can tell your story within an hour. So you can, you can give your years. So giving the, giving the years is a, is, a, is a great quality and generosity. Actually, you can, it's an offering. We always think talking is the offering, you know, giving an advice is the offering. No, sometimes more than giving a piece of advice, giving the ears or listening is more uh, more giving than talking or giving a piece of advice. So, um, uh, you know, for your practical question, my practical answer would be if you have time to spend, to interact, it's a great, maybe you can put the time limit, okay. Uh, right, I can spend one hour or half an hour. And you just sit for half an hour, listen, 
You might pick something useful and maybe not useful, it's fine. You're just offering your ears. Like, you know, in psychotherapy, you know, psychotherapists probably they listen a lot. They are paid for listening. <laughs> so they're paid for, you know, their, their offering to listen. So uh, you offer your ears to listen. So that's a great offering to the world. So you're a young man and you can develop that quality when you, when you grow up, come to middle age, you'll be a great listener and uh, it'll be a great quality. I mean, practical answer. So uh, sometimes, you know, people don't need advice. You know, just no need to get advice. You, all, all you need, all they need is just to be heard. I mean, you know, last few days, you know, someone, you saw the saga here last few days, and then all that person wanted was to be heard, you know, someone to hear. It doesn't matter how harsh, how bad the language that person used, very bad language, but that's a different thing, but it just want to be heard. You know, that person want, wanted to be heard. So, you know, we were quiet and that person was heard and that's what that person wanted. So, uh, yeah, so I think uh, if you have the opportunity uh, to give you ears and give you ears and both of them and be a great listener. We have great talkers in the world everywhere, <laughs> but uh, great listeners, very few. So be a great listener, I think. That would be a great uh, quality to develop in your life. And also, you know, that would be a very soothing experience for you know, just think that you're being generous. You know, listening is, is great generosity. You can develop, you, you can improve as a person, you know, you being, I know it's, it can be really annoying, you know, it's, it's, you know, same thing over again and again being repeated, you know, oh, again, the same story going, okay, today again, okay, again. But for, for me, the same story again and again, for that person, that person, would have forgotten, you know, they told the story yesterday and <laughs> telling again, you know, just, oh, he listened to my story, oh, nice, and now I feel free. And tomorrow again, same story, and they feel free again. So you can practice your generosity without, without paying anything, but they pay you for listening, isn't it? So, yeah, be a great listener. That's my advice for you. Question. So maybe uh, we can finish for today. Yes, I hope uh, it was useful. And if something was not useful, please don't worry. Drop them and be relaxed, easy, and take home whatever is useful to you. And uh, have a good, good week. May you all be well and happy. And I give you. Uh, some blessings. May you all be well, happy, and uh, peaceful. Sabbitiyo vivajjantu sabbarogo vinasatu mate bhavatvantarayo Sukhidi gayako bhava abhivadana silis nichang vodhapachayno Chattaro dhamma vadanti ayuvanno sukang balang sabbiti yo vivajjantu sabbarogo vinasatu mate bhavatvantarayo Sukhidi gayako bhava sabbe buddha balapatta pache kananchayang balang arhantanang chate jena Rakkang bandami sabbasu. So may you all be well, happy, and uh, experience the freedom and peace.